Hola. Yeah, I got you. Bon dia a tots. Per favor, utilitzem és, com sempre, el sistema de traducció. Ara va començar la roda de premsa. Anem a tindre-ho en el cap perquè totes les dies és igual en els auriculars. Primera pregunta, Quique. Hola, míster, què tal? Buenas tardes. Quique Mateu, gestiona Radio Valencia. El Valencia no ha tirado entre los tres palos en toda la primera parte. ¿Tiene usted la sensación de que el equipo ha regalado 45 minutos y con la segunda parte no ha sido suficiente para ganar? La primera parte me parece difícil de explicar. Um, it was an uh, incredibly disappointing performance. Uh, I said at half time that for me, football is ultimately about, of course, we have to win, but we have to enjoy our experience. We have to have expression. And in the first half, we didn't show anything. But there are two positives I can take from that game the response in the second half. And the players have demonstrated in the last month, time and time again, against Eibar, against Getafe, against Real Madrid, and now again today, that they have some spirit, they have fight, that they come back in a game where it looks like the game might have gone. But I agree with you, the first half uh, is not acceptable. Hola, mister. Buenas tardes. Alberto Santamaría de Sillas Goli de la 99.9 de Valencia Radio. Usted habló el día de su presentación sobre las dudas que podía generar su llegada a Valencia después de seis partidos en Liga al frente, cuatro puntos de 18 posibles. Ahora que ya conoce la Liga, que conoce el club, usted, a pesar de su inexperiencia, se ve capacitado para sacar esto adelante, para que el Valencia sume los puntos cuanto antes, al menos, para no sufrir por mantener la categoría. Gracias. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my confidence in myself is fine. The confidence in terms of the work that we're doing is good. I agree the results are not what I, I wanted and what the club expects, what the fans expect. Um, but I have belief in myself. I've got belief in the players. Um, but it's taking time to change, to get to a level that I want. And the players, obviously, it's not through a lack of effort from the players. You've seen in the second half today them run a million miles to try and get the game back uh, in a very difficult game. So, no, I've got faith in myself. Obviously, I understand the question, but from my point of view, you know, I'm comfortable. I've been comfortable since day one. The work that I'm doing here, I believe, I believe in. The players are demonstrating that they believe in it, but at the time, at this moment in time, it's difficult to get exactly the same team out on the pitch, two games running. I think that must be a focal point now for the next few weeks is to try and get some consistency. That's the word, obviously, because we're playing in moments. Uh, you see today good moments in the second half, but then obviously moments where we fall below any, any standard that we would expect and I would expect. Hola, buenos, buenos días. Eh, Carlos Martínez de la cadena SER. ¿Y qué, qué nivel de preocupación debemos tener cuando, independientemente del resultado, porque hoy se ha empatado, incluso si el árbitro hubiese estado bien, se habría tenido que ganar el partido porque el gol de Alcácer no era, no era fuera de juego. Pero independientemente del resultado, ¿qué preocupación tenemos que tener cuando, partido tras partido, el rival siempre es mejor que el Valencia? Sí, yeah, I mean, the, the goal was on side, um, but it wouldn't be right for me to talk about a, a, a disallowed goal. Uh, I think that you've, you've seen the game. I'm sure the Rey Vallecano coach will be disappointed with the result. I said one of the big, the big positives is the fact that we come back and we get a draw out of the game. Today is a point gained. Um, and we continue to work tomorrow on the training field, 
all week. We've got game after game after game. We've got a game Thursday. We've got a game next Sunday. And I'm confident if we keep doing the same work and showing the application that we showed in the second half that we'll get the points that we need to more than comfortably avoid what you're talking about. Rovira de UFC Radio. Paco Alcácer, nada más terminar el partido, ha dicho no podemos seguir así, no podemos poner ya excusas de la falta de adaptación a, al nuevo entrenador, a, a Gary Neville. Tenemos que respons responsabilizarnos nosotros mismos. ¿Tiene que haber autocrítica y, re y responsabilidad en el vestuario en los jugadores? Paco Alcázar es un fantástico profesional. He takes responsibility. He's been fantastic since the moment that I came here. And that's what I would expect a fantastic professional to say after a game like that. I've got no excuses either. I didn't come in here and blame the referee for the disallowed goal or anything like that. That's not the way in which I operate. And I'm grateful to have players like Paco Alcazar who take responsibility, who understand the situation and want to correct it immediately because that's what we need to obviously do because the first half performance, it's not acceptable in anybody's book. Football, I said to you before, should be about expression, about the, the, the joy of wanting to play football. In the first half, it didn't look like we had any joy out on the pitch. And I'm sorry, but that's, that's the very least that we have to accept, you know, that's the very least that we have to give. The fans come here in their numbers, they expect a lot, and rightly so, but they should expect that we show joy and give them entertainment. And today in the first half, we didn't give them anything that I would expect them to give. And Paco's words, um, you know, I agree with. Hi, okay, Richard Martin from The Telegraph. Um, the fans booed the players off after the first half. Does that, was the players getting booed by their own supporters? That have a, can that have a negative or a positive impact? It might seem to have a positive impact today, but in general. <laughs> I've always said that at any football ground that fans have the absolute right to express themselves however they want. And as players, as coaches, we have to accept that. The fans here are fantastic. We've seen that already in this past five, six weeks. The game against Barcelona and Real Madrid here were some of the best atmospheres that you'll see in a football ground where the fans are passionate. You heard them in the second half today still singing behind that goal. And I am massively appreciative of that. There's no way I can talk about some booze at half time when I see the fans still singing and, and appreciating or wanting the team to do better in the second half. So I think in terms of whether it has a negative or positive effect, it, it had a positive effect because in the second half we played a lot better than the first. Hi, Gary. Uh, Sid Lowe from The Guardian. I'm interested in you talking about the, the first half performance as being one with a, with a lack of joy. Um, is there some explanation for that? Is that pressure that players are under? Is it a, a lack of physical condition to be able to do the things that they have in their mind to then kind of physically reproduce that? Is there, is there some way of analysing that and, and understanding why that happens? I think that's, that's, my, oh, <laughs> that's my job over the next few days um, to try and understand that and speak to the players and continually speak with them. Um, I think obviously the reason that I'm here is because the, the players obviously pre me coming here uh, the results weren't fantastic and the problem doesn't just start now. But actually, I found them to be a good group of players. And I, I know you would say, well, I would say that, but I actually find them to be a good group of players. They're, the disappointment they carry with the shirt when they don't play well. You've heard what uh, Paco Alcazar said. I've just heard that first hand here. I didn't know what Paco, uh, Paco had said. But my belief is that the players understand they have a will to want to do well. You never, you never find a team that fights back in a game continually that in the first half, I'm sure people will say, oh, there's no spirit, there's no fight. Teams don't come back from bad, from bad positions in games and losing positions to get draws unless they've got fight and spirit. So what I'm seeing is that if there was no comeback in the second half, if there was no response, then I would be concerned. I'm not concerned because I see response after response after response. Abar, we're down to 10 men. We have a penalty against us. We can go 2-0 two, two down and we end up getting a point. Getafe at home, we're down 1-0, 2-1. We end up getting a point. Real Madrid score with six minutes to go and we get a point. Today, we come back in the 87th minute. That, that counts for a lot. Trust me in football, 
that when a team comes back continuously and fights to the end, that is an important characteristic. And to me, that is the big thing that I take out of this game today, that the players want to are desperately correct. And obviously, Paco's words echo that. Sí, buenas, Pello Bordo, el periódico Levante. Eh, dice usted que, que el equipo quiere, pero no puede. Eh, la pregunta es muy clara y muy breve. ¿Faltan líderes en el vestuario? No, I, no, I, no, I never, I never, no, I never said once, but can't. You said that. <laughs> I said they come back with fantastic spirit. I never said the team can't. I said the team wants to show fantastic spirit, and they've shown in four matches a spirit to come back and get a result. So, no, I never, I never said the team can't. Please don't misquote me on that. Muy bien, está claro. Pero la pregunta, en todo caso, sería ¿faltan líderes en el vestuario? I think I said, I think I'll repeat part of what I said in the last answer. What's leadership? Leadership is showing a fighting spirit when times are difficult, when the game's not going your way, when the game is going against you. I think that what we saw in the second half, through a number of performances of individuals, is leadership because <laughs> Trust me, in football, when you're 2-1 down, 1-0 down, and we have been now four or five times, you have to show leadership characteristics to come back. The spirit to keep going, the will to fight on, the will to get the goal at the end when things aren't going your way. So I see leadership characteristics. I mean, leadership's a word, it's a, it's a buzzword, it's a, it's a word that will always be used in football, and I accept that you obviously do need leaders in the dressing room. But what I saw in the second half was a response and you have to show those types of characteristics if you're going to get a result when we played like we did in the first half. Dos últimas preguntas, Salva Folgado. Hola, entrenador, buenos días. Salva Folgado en directo para 97.7 Radio. Me gustaría saber eh, a qué pretende usted que juegue su equipo y ahora mismo respecto a esa idea si el equipo está muy lejos o muy cerca. Gracias. I think that I'm seeing certain things that I like and that we're improving on. And obviously there are times where, you know, things aren't going so well. But then that's, that's football. Football's not, uh, I said, I've said this, I think, in the first week when I came here. There's no magic wand. I'm obviously trying to, uh, to create change here in terms of some of the things that I'm asking. And certain things are taking a little bit more time. But that's not through a lack of effort from the players and a lack of belief uh, from them. It's not obviously what we expect, it's not what the players expect, but from my point of view, I've got very clear ideas and you know, I agree we need to start seeing them quickly uh, in the performances in the next coming weeks. Because like I said, the first half, there's no point in me sitting here saying that I like what I saw. No one liked what they saw in the first half today. Hola Gary, Juan Carlos Alarcón de Plaza Deportiva. Eh, ¿Podría definir el partido de hoy de Dani Parejo y si está usted satisfecho con el rendimiento que ha ofrecido el capitán? I will never discuss individual performances in terms of analysis. I will, you know, that's not just the case of Dani Parejo. From my point of view, I'll go back and watch the video and analyse every player and speak with them directly. And I think you'll appreciate that. I understand you want analysis of individuals, but from my point of view, you know, I, I will never do that in a press conference. And Dani has been, you talk about leadership qualities, Danny is the, a player that wants the ball all the time throughout the game, in every single game, and shows fantastic leadership qualities. He's been out there nearly, nearly every single minute of every match I've played. Um, so, from my point of view, I won't analyse players' performances, um, you know, but I'm very happy with Danny Parejo. Última pregunta. Hola, buenas. Eh, Gary, Sergio Aspas de, del Mundo. Quería preguntarle eh, la decisión de sentar al Alcácer de inicio y si cree que a lo mejor ha sido un lujo por el hecho de que es un jugador que está de dulce, está en buena racha, como lo ha demostrado. Eh, si os decía a lo mejor pensando en Copa o por qué no ha jugado de inicio. <risa> Four weeks ago you were asking me why Alvaro wasn't playing. <risa> um, we have, if you look at our program, and I spoke with uh, Paco yesterday. We have an incredibly, uh, what's the word? Uh, we, have, we, have, we have games, I think, incredible uh, amount of games. If you look at the programme over this next two weeks, we have a game every three days. It is impossible to play strikers and wingers 
every three days. It's impossible. So we have, obviously, Alvaro is scoring goals. Paco is scoring goals. And it's important that I try and select and, get, and keep fresh, freshness in the team uh, game to game. Today I thought it was a game that suited Alvaro, um, but not because it didn't suit Paco. I just felt that looking at the games programme that we have, it's impossible to start them every three days, the same players. It's impossible, particularly the ones that rely upon sharpness. And so Paco scored two goals in the last two games. You say he's in a sweet moment, but so is Alvaro. Alvaro's in a good moment as well. And I felt today that we could play, because of the way that Real Vallecano play, I felt that we would need more of a direct, more direct approach in the first part of the game to play up to Alvaro. And that was the only reason. It was a, 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 a physical reason, but also a tactical reason. Um, but Paco has been outstanding from the moment that I came here. He is someone who I've played a lot of football in this season. And it's just a case of making sure that all players are fresh when they pl play, particularly the strikers who rely upon freshness. Muy bien. Gracias. Okay.